to uh, explain about this uh, method and further yep. if you want interest then we try to discuss more that okay so let me share my yep. screen yeah. yeah thank you can you see my screen uh not it yep all good it's just loading now yep all good i could see your screen available yep. really such as sentinel yep. 2 satellite imagery so it's one kind of yep. free data and yep. uh, this data set uh a special resolution is the 10 to 20 meters temporal resolution yep. of five days as well as we can yep. use this data set uh to create the ndvi map evi nwi for pre uh probe monitoring and this data set we can easily access from the google earth yep. engine or copernicus hub open hub we can easily access this data as well as we also use here the Landsat yes. 8 and 9. So basically Landsat 8 and 9 special resolution is a 30 meter. And it's a 16 days yes. uh, temporal. So this data set is also useful yes. to identify for NDVI or SAVI indices for pro health and yield estimation. It also use. And then MODIS. Yes. MODIS data set is also uh, provide this type of information. We can easily get the NDVI and this can be used to monitor the growth phase and stress in the wheat field. It also used. Yeah. As well as we also use the climate variable, such as chart satellite yeah. imagery, climate hazard group infrared yeah. precipitation with station data. So this special resolution is the five kilometer and temporal resolution is the five yeah. daily. We can get this data. And this data set is useful for yeah. understanding the water stress and irrigation requirement. And uh, it's also monitoring rainfall, which yep. affect the wheat uh, crop yield. Okay, as well as we also use that the uh, ER5 yep. data set. Basically, it's one kind of ECM WF reanalysis data, and we can get the uh, hourly data set. And this data set we can easily get uh, temperature, wind speed, solar radiation, soil moisture, and these are crucial for modeling the wheat uh, crop and yield prediction. And this data so we can easily access from here, yeah. as well as uh, for the soil data, it also uh, responsible for the crop yield prediction. In this case, I use at the this yeah. soil data. Okay, so this is the short name about that soil grid, and basically provide global prediction for soil properties such as organic carbon, pH, texture, bulk density. So this is the vital for understanding the soil health and its impact on the uh, yield, uh, yield. Yeah. And uh, so this is the, this type of data we are just using here. And basically, yeah. we provide you the best accuracy. Suppose in this time, we already discussed for uh, Landsat, Sentinel, okay, this type of imagery. Yeah. So basically, uh, yeah. we get the better accuracy uh, Sentinel-2 yeah. satellite imagery because Sentinel-2 satellite image is the high resolution than this type oh. of Landsat 8 or 9. Okay, so basically, oh. in this case, in our model, uh, if you want, yeah. you can simply use the Sentinel-2 and then further you calculate this type of indices because this type of indices is uh, mainly it's uh, we can easily identify what is the status about our probe okay, using this type yeah. of uh, indices if you can also use it. But Landsat is also okay. If you want, you can also combine all of data set and also uh, make this model. It's also no problem. So now we talk yeah. about the method. Suppose this type of things I want to apply. And then we try to yeah. make the methodology for the crop yield prediction using Google Earth Engine. So first of yeah. all, in this case, uh, we have to select our study area. Suppose you yeah. simply select your study area and then further you simply choose the data collection. In this time, when you want to apply the machine learning model, you must need yeah. the field data. It, it must need. Yeah. Okay. Field data we must need. So in this time, satellite data we can easily yeah. get from the Landsat Sentinel, we can easily get it, as well as also vegetation indices or climate variables or soil moisture. So this type of data we can easily get from the satellite data. But field data, yeah. it's mainly provided with the ground truth data for crop yield. Okay, ground truth yeah. data for the crop yield, it also need. When you want to make the crop yield prediction map, then you must need the crop yield data okay, for the ground truth. Yeah and soil properties yeah. and other relevant parameters we also need. But most important is the crop yield. Okay, so without crop yield yeah. data, we cannot apply the machine learning model and predict the crop yield. Okay. Yeah. So this data further we also use for training and validation. 
this type of data we also use yeah. for the training and validation and third number step uh, we try to uh, for, uh mainly atmospheric correction geometric correction cloud maxing so this type of image process uh, pre-processing step we also do in here and then we try to combine yeah. different satellite data so in this time in this model i combine all of data sentinel to lancer and modis to enhance the spatial and yeah. temporal resolution of the data set and then feature yeah. extraction okay so now uh, uh, we extract the feature extraction calculate the indices mdvi evi and climate variable mainly temperature or precipitation and soil properties mainly soil moisture or ps so this this is my feature suppose mdvi evi yeah. temperature precipitation moisture ps so this type of feature i want to input in my model and further i yeah. want to extract the information for crop yield so this yeah. type of feature we just do it as well as uh, we just suppose a vegetation indices we are just using the ndvi evi from satellite imagery to access the vegetation health and biomass then climate data mainly we are using the temperature data and environmental uh, affecting for the crop growth okay temperature or precipitation yeah. rainfall data then soil data it also need okay and model development yeah. in this time uh, we prepare a data set with feature extract from satellite images and ground truth crop yield measurement okay so this uh, uh, ground truth crop yield measurement we must need when you want to apply this type of things and yeah. then uh, choose the relevant feature with the influence crop yield and further we try to choose a um, machine learning model such as if uh, random forest or support vector machine so in this case i try to apply the random forest and then train the model using the uh, data set which i created and further we also check uh, using the cross validation technique to optimize the model performance we also check yeah and for the model evaluation we are just uh, calculate the mean absolute error or root mean yeah. square error or r square value and validation and further yeah. we uh, visualize the pre uh, yield prediction okay so this is the uh, summary method okay so this same method yeah. i already uh, make one study area uh, in my yeah. code so let me show you the code and show you the project so in this time i try to develop this type of things and this type of things in this time i not have this type of ground root data so i take the yeah. randomly data okay suppose no, i no. simply take the randomly data group yield data and further yeah. i try to develop this type of things okay so now it's yeah. about that uh crop yield prediction map this type of map we can yeah. generate after including all of data set okay but when you want to have the ground truth data then you also get the more accurate results so in this time i develop this model um random data set just use the randomly some point suppose you can see i show you that suppose you can see suppose this type of point i just simply random data such as crop yield data for this type of point and further i simply use this data for my crop yield prediction okay yeah. so now i explain this code suppose here you can see so first of all we just simply use here the sentinel 2 satellite imagery yeah. and further we try to suppose the specific time priority with the year of 2023 and create yeah. the ndvi okay so yeah. this is the ndvi then also we calculate the ndvi for uh, landsat a okay then mode is so yeah. all of those things we try to calculate also again the charts mainly precipitation data we get from the chart yeah. satellite imagery as well as we also use at the ER5 for the temperature. Okay, we can get the temperature data and further yeah. soil grid or central one data we also use in here. Okay, and combine yeah. all of data. Okay, we combine all of data for feature. Suppose yeah. NDVI uh, from the Sentinel NDVI from Landsat, then Modis NDVI, then precipitation, then temperature, then soil moisture. So these type of things we simply create combine because it's yeah. our feature. And from yeah. that, we just use this type of training point. So in this time, uh, it, here you can see, in this time, I take the randomly, this type of point, I randomly, okay? I yeah. take this type of point randomly. Suppose for this coordinate, I find out the yield four ton or for any unit, okay? For four yeah. ton unit. Suppose this coordinate, I find out that six ton, five ton, okay? Just simply put some coordinate and there put the yield uh, value, okay? From the ground, yeah. from the ground. This data yeah. we I, in this time we take the randomly and then make this model but when you want to work for the uh, your own study area first of all you need yes. this type of data suppose for this specific uh, coordinate or a specific land what is the yield value okay yeah it can yeah. be yearly or a specific time what is the yield value okay so based on this value we just make the training point and further yeah. we are just uh, prepare the training data set and also just use the random forest algorithm and further, yeah. 
we are just make this machine learning model and we can check this uh, visualize this type of map so in this oh. case we find out this type of map now i explain this map so in this map here you can see when i click on here um okay because in this time it not added the list and when i add the list then also more better or if you want you can simply export this type of map as a GeoDeep yeah. file format and also make the map in art map for your research paper presentation so in this oh. case we find out this type of you can see 3.1 to 7.9 so basically this is our range we find out so 3.1 is the low yield estimation and 7.9 is the high so in this yeah. case i use this type of red color here you can see this type of red color identify about the low proof yield estimation and this type of oh. green color identify about the high and this type of being uh -huh. the high estimation about the proof yield estimation yeah so this is the one kind of summary and in this uh -huh. time we are not use the accurate data but when you want to work for your own study area then first yeah. of all we need this type of data suppose this type of coordinate for a specific location what is uh -huh. the proof yield data it's need uh -huh. yeah yeah uh, I think for my research, whatever I am doing, I don't need the uh, original ground truth data. I can explain them using the same way which you are explaining me. I can tell them I randomly took like some points and then I test it. Okay, so if you have this type of data, then also more better. Then we can easily uh, use this type of data. And if, uh, if, if is it related to the crop yield data, yeah, also crop yield number, how much crop yield we can get from this uh, coordinate, it also available, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, then it's more better. Then you can easily apply this algorithm. I hope we also get the mo more better results. So in this time, it's a randomly, randomly we display this type of data. So I simply take some point and for this point, I simply set some uh, yield data. Okay, but when oh, you want oh. to use the accurate data, then you also get the more accurate result, I hope, yeah. So oh, in this oh. case, if you are interested in this model, so you can just yes. send me, you can just send me your own data. So basically this data, including this type of information, suppose a specific coordinate, latitude, longitude value, as well as also their yield value for each oh, oh. coordinate. Then you also oh, get the oh. more better result. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So you can send me this data further. Uh, I will uh, tease you how we can easily work with this data and also yeah. uh, make the uh, wheat yield prediction map okay uh, i don't have any ground truth data with me because my college, college didn't provide me any ground, ground truth, truth data. data they want they me want to search by myself. myself yeah you can also search about so no i actually i'm not yeah, sure like where i get it because the site that i have referred is australian bureau of statistics abs.com yeah, so now we this data we need because it uh, useful for training data. Suppose this type of based on uh, based on this values, we yeah, uh, yeah. extract the information and also make this uh, crop yield prediction. Okay. okay. Uh, so I will send you this uh, methodology, uh, this doc file. Yeah. I will send you. You also yeah, read yeah. it. Then you also get yeah. the more better idea. And yeah, as, yeah. as well as you also try to find out this type of field data. Okay, crop okay. yield, yield data from the study data. area. Ground truth data. Then sure, more sure. better. Yeah. Uh, then uh, when can we connect, can 